Hi everyone, Brett here, Altitude Scale Modeling. Today we're going to do another review of a new tool, Revel Kit, which is a very interesting subject that I like a lot. The Bristol Bowfighter TFX Torpedo Bomber. Fighter Bomber. Bomber Fighter. Plane. Really nice Revel box art. Nothing really on that side. It's the Revel of Germany. 03943. Nothing really on the sides, but on the back. Some pictures of somebody's build. A little bit about the bow fighter in multiple languages. Ravel's color call out, because they only do Ravel, as you can tell. Never use Ravel paint, so I don't know if they're good or not. This just arrived, so I haven't even opened it. So, one of Ravel's end opening boxes, which none of us like. It's filled with plastic to about there. But, they're all individually wrapped. Well, I guess they're not all individually wrapped. So, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sprues, two sprues of clear parts, 148 scale. Let's go. Oversized tape up bags help keep things from moving around. Well, that's a kind of a nice touch. At least not staples. Always check your bags, make sure there's no parts inside. I guess there's more screws than I say, because there's a bunch of little screws. Alright, two fuselage halves. Both with some very nice interior detail. There's one of the controls there, some control boxes, radio switches there, ejector pin marks all over. You can see ejector pin marks there, and a couple there. Not sure if they'll be in plain sight, but it would have been nice if they could have got them out of the way. But, it is what it is, and we move on. No rivet detail, but lots of good panel line detail. Maybe a little too fine, once you get paint on it. Definitely when you sand seam lines. Very, just some lighting around here. Yeah, there we go. That's how they both look. All right, and we've got control surfaces, torpedo. Be sure and check your ejector pin marks in here so you don't have any fit issues when you're doing a dry fit. But again, nice panel line detail. Some fabric detail. It looks really good. I'm not one of those people that hates Ravel. There's your torpedo. Some nice detail on it too. Because I grew up with Ravel and it was all we had, so it's all we had to build. Here are some parts. Don't know what they are, but it looks like a bulbous nose. But it's not. So the instructions will tell us later. I'm thinking these are the doors for the internal bomb barrier landing here. This one looks like front landing gear, no, tail wheel leg, because it doesn't have front landing gear, and then a bulkhead. So since it's in two parts, you won't have a, a, uh, boy, mine just drew a blank. Burr line. 
which you may have a seam line. And then that's it for this one bag there. Let's look at some wings and what's ever in the wing bag. Again, tape, which is still to me better than staples. Except for that sticks on everything. So, upper and lower wings. It's got a pretty decent wingspan before the eighth scale. Whip out my excuse me while I whip this out. 14 and a quarter inch wingspan. Or for you people using the metric system, that would be 37 centimeters, which you may already know. Lots of good access panel detail, panel line detail, no rivet detail. I don't know if there's rivets on this. I'll have to look at my references. But you can see, access panel detail does have rivets and screw heads in it. Again, check all your ejector pin marks, make sure they're flush. So you don't have a problem when you're doing your test fitting and then actually gluing them together. There's some detail for flaps down, which is nice. And the same thing on the top. Panel line detail, access panel detail, but no real rivet detail. Well, no rivet detail at all. And I'm assuming it does, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure someone can tell me. There. Here's your copyright stamp, 2018. Which, hopefully, this is the floor of the interior, so it's on the bottom. And you've got control surfaces. Uh, parts for... I think those are for one of the doors. Door opening mechanisms. There's a machine gun with no barrel detail, no drilled out barrel. A couple of noses bulkhead, seat backs and seats with molded in seat belts, no ejector pins on the top of the floor which is nice, lots underneath but apparently you're not going to be able to see those anyway, there's bulkhead detail <coughs> with a door hatch, ladder, this does have rivet detail on it, raised rivet detail. So they are paying attention to some of it. These, like I said, I'm thinking these are the opening mechanisms for your landing gear door or the bomb bay. And there's your crappy seatbelt detail. It's just lap belts on that one, but it's more shoulder and lap belts harnesses on there. These are your seat backs. And your control services, which again, you want to pay, pay attention to cleaning up. These are one piece here. So, you're good there. And this one has some wing spars, tail, instrument panel sides with the thrust levers, instrument panels, two of them. So I'm guessing there's going to be different versions coming out. There's a nice hose. There's some more raised rear detail here, 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 and here. This is recessed rivet detail. Why they'd have that on control surfaces, but not on the actual rest of the aircraft, I don't know. So. This has regular panel lines on it. There's part of the cockpit area. There's your instrument panels. With attached rudder pedals. Control yoke. Landing gear legs with halves, so you'll have a seam line, but not any burring. And this part here with raised rear detail, this one, good detail on the wing spar parts. And then these control surfaces here, can you see? Have rivet detail on these, but not on any of the other parts. I'm confused, but I'm not a 
kit manufacturer. I'm just the builder and the seller and a reviewer, but I'm not a manufacturer. And I'm not even a professional builder. And I buy all the, my kits, so I can say anything I want. One of the propeller hubs. I'm guessing the other one's in the other bag. Engine cowlings. Good panel light detail, but again, no rivet detail. If you were to want them opened up, because there's our engines in here, you'll have to clean up those ejector pin marks. Here are the engines in halves, as you can see. And there are if those are landing gear legs, then what were these? Different front one, different tailwheel landing gear for a different version. Alright, that makes sense. This looks like a bomb rack. So these are one piece landing gear legs. And there's no it's any burden on those, so good job, Ravel. Here's your engine detail. Looking very nice. These parts right here are hollowed out. So the detail in there is good. You're, I'm thinking these are pistons and there's your ignition wires. These are cylinder heads, sorry. And you can put your leads in there because there's your leads. Another bulkhead. There's the inner parts of your tires, no weight on wheels. And then open or closed for your exhaust venting. And this one has your one of your props. Some more little bitty parts. It's like the underside of the front fuselage. Prop doesn't have any burring or maybe a tiniest little bit of flash on the tip. Other than that, it's okay. Like I said, I don't have a problem with Ravel kits. The rest of the world does. All this is matching sprues, so the exact same thing I just showed you repeated for the other side, obviously. So that makes this part of the bottom of the engine not part of the front of the fuselage. Clear parts. Get to use my knife for the first time today. Three sprues of clear parts that have been rubbing against each other. These are for all your tiny windows and lights and things like that. This, I'm thinking is for the rear. Nope, not for the rear. Looking at a picture here. For the upper gun. And then this is the main canopy, and it does look really good. You see a little bit of distortion, but nothing too awful. So why it's in the same bag to get scratched up by everything else, I do not know. And then we have instructions and decals. Printed by, printed in Italy, may or may not be cartographed, but they didn't get credit if it was. But they're really nice and not overly glossy. The roundels look really good. The instrument panel detail looks pretty good. A few stencils. So you got your 489 squadron, your 254 squadron, whichever one you're going to do. 
But yeah, they're nice and kind of matte and cut really close. Not a lot of decal film except on these letters right here. These letters are connected, these letters are connected, but the rest of it looks really good. So good job with those. This is just a little safety advice flyer. And we have Ravel's new instructions, which are actually pretty good. Better than they used to be. Please note the enclosed safety advice. Please. Here are some of their guidelines for building, test fitting, measuring, painting. <gasps> painting on the sprue. Oh no. Well, what's the point in going on? All the little guides to their little icons. More guides for more icons. And you've got Ravel's color callouts, which you can use or can't use. It's up to you. I just will usually look at leaf green, silk matte, and try to figure out, depending which color I'm using, if I'm using AK Real Colors or Tamiya's or Mr. Color or Mission Models, which one looks best. Sprue maps. So these blacked out ones are parts not used. There's not very many parts not used. More. One there not used. And of course you start with cockpit. So those are not control arms. They're part of the frame of the fuselage, or the cockpit, sorry, to mount the cockpit center port on. And you put your decal on, or Edward will come out with some PE, I'm sure. And your side parts of the fuselage, also part of the wing spar. And some more bulkhead parts. Looks like the gunner's seat and the gunner himself. Your wheels, tail wheel, retracted, not retracted. Cutting and painting, make sure you open up some holes. Taped this in there, it says, before gluing. Tape these together. So your tail wheel's got to go in before, which I don't know why. Looks like the way your tail wheel is set up, it can go in later. Good. You do have two different nose. I was right, that is a nose, a bulbous nose, or your regular nose, depending on which version you're doing. It's telling you to putty. Putty over some parts. Interesting. Open or close for the gun mount. So you're going to have to cut this part off if you want it open. That's interesting too, you have to cut that clear part, and that's not going to be easy. Wings, control surfaces, part fill landing gear, bay, wings going together, lights going in, vents going in, side marker lights going on, and your flaps, aileron seating, it shows this one has resin, but it's only for retracted flaps, so I guess the rivets disappear when the flaps are extended. And more wing parts, ailerons, flaps again, putting the wings onto the fuselage. If you're going to have it open, there's a ladder. If you have it closed, there's a retracted part. Putting your engines together, do not glue the prop shaft, of course. The painting and detailing guides for those. The exhaust parts. Putting all your cowlings on. I guess this is the point where you decide if you're going to leave one off or not, and then opened or closed. Back here, putting the engines on, putting the exhausts on. I'd wait until after it's painted for that myself. Putting your intakes on. And again, which version you're doing has different intakes. And then the tail section with the elevators. 
the actuators for the elevators, the rudder, the um, extension part for the rudder, which again is a question mark for what part you're going to do, what part you're going to do. So pay attention, decide what you're going to do first. So those parts that I said were initially prepared, the fuselage are actually closed door bays. If you're doing your gear up. There's all your landing gear part assembly going together. And then if your gear is down, you need to cut that part in half. Very carefully. Props and spinners going on. Don't glue, of course. There's version 1, there's version 2. And then some more antennas, which I'll put it at the end. There's a torpedo, which is a little box part that breaks off as soon as it hits the water. Or when it detaches from the plane. And then there's your scheme number 1, Squadron 489. Langham, England. Invasion stripes. Nice gray color. Scheme number two, which is pretty much the same. Scheme number three is the bulbous nose, which is the same color scheme but no invasion stripes. Scheme number four is also the bulbous nose, which has no invasion stripes. So, the bulbous nose gets the tail extension part torpedo part does not. So there's two year version differences right there. This part going increasing the length of the tail section. This one does not have it. So there you go. Ravel's new tool Bristol Bowfighter TFX. Good looking kit of a good looking aircraft. Tammy has one out there. It's been around for a while. I'm sure it's a nice quality build too. So, thanks for watching. Sit your ass at the bench. Do some modeling. Someone sent me a picture of a built one of these. Besides this one right here. And y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching.